So initially, when I, you know, we've been we've been doing the podcast. What now, Harry? Like eight years, right? Eight years at this point. Yeah, eight years. So, and and I've changed. You know, my you know I I you know I doing this with Patrice, and it was very kind of rigid and stuff. And then and then, you know, gender became. So much, you know, the way we accepted and became so much more fluid, and and so on and so forth. And then I had to kind of readjust because um, um, we used to talk about you know masculinity and femininity, and and in a very kind of uh, kind of boxed in way, you mm-hmm. know. And and then I, I what I so I, I so I was dealing this, and I wanted to be able to give advice or at least take the principles that I thought were, were applied and be able to apply it to LGBT community as well. And so the model kind of became not so much masculine and feminine, but dominant and submissive. Um, because it, uh, we, because I'm just trying to make sense. I like, I knew that there was a, a, a specific truth to, what I was saying, but I didn't know how to readjust it to the LGBT community. And I, I think the first thing was we had, um, there was a, a, a good friend of ours. I'll tell you who it is later, but she's a lesbian and she, she was dating this girl or trying to date this girl who was putting her in the friend zone. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, and I, and I, you know, you, you well, just you learned kind- that the, the rules of the friend zone, it, it applies no matter what, the the sex of the person is whether it's right. lesbians a gay men like the rules are the same you know because the, it's, it's really dominant and 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 submissive it's the person that's more aggressive and the person that's, that's less aggressive or whatever and when you when you figure out what the principles are then that when, when you figure out how it fits in then the principles apply and i um and she's a real good friend of mine. And so, I, you know, I wanted her to win. And so we had her on and I, we kind of, I kind of explained kind of the same principles I would have told a dude if he was being put in the friend zone. And, and so that was kind of the same thing that was happening with you. I, I, but at that point in time, I had been doing that with with my gay and lesbian friends in any way. Is you know, this and like were, a really like exaggerated, elegant way for you to just call me a bottom? <laughs> um, hmm. we weren't that there, but I, I, I guess I, now I, we know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, don't I, I, I wasn't. I mean, it's like the Torah to be like, guys, Mateo's a bottom. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I get that. I also think too, like, you know, like the the obviously the rules of what it, what gender is and uh-huh. um, the confinements of that. I think is not something that's applicable only to the queer community, but also exists predominantly in the straight community. It's just that we probably have an easier time tapping into uh, maybe those subjects than straight people. In a lot of ways, straight men, I find, have a really hard time. um, Not all straight men, but this is generally speaking, like straight cis men have a hard time like releasing the the confinements of what society wants them to be like dress a certain way, talk a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way. This and and I understand it because coming as an outsider growing up, I just everything I was just constantly trying to emulate and be that thing because I knew what was I actually was was hated. So, you know, I think if you're straight, it's just it's maybe you just you're not so aware of you're playing to the script because everything tells you to be that way from Disney movies to TV mm-hmm. shows to magazines to leaders to religious figures to family members to like I had nowhere to look. That's why I have that joke. Like the first gay person I saw on TV was C-3PO. So it's <laughs> like, you know, I think now with like more queer people or at least even straight cis men who are more comfortable in their feminine side is it's it's like the release of this sort of masculine uh, straight jacket that I think a lot of guys wear. Now, that being said, if you're a guy who likes football and you go hunting and all this stuff, like, it's not to say like you're wrong and you're playing to the patriarch. No, you like that stuff and that's yeah. who you are. You know, the yeah. same way that I, as a kid, loved to dress up like Sleeping Beauty and sing to the birds. It's like I think <laughs> it's just whatever, whatever fits you, um, whatever like costume that fits you, it makes you feel most comfortable in yourself. Is is the one you should lead with. I think it's when you think that the way you act is how others are supposed to act is when it starts to become problematic. But 
Yeah, I would agree with that. Like if you're talking about relationships, straight, gay, whatever, I think there's generally speaking, yeah, there probably is one more dominant and more submissive in mm -hmm. terms of energy because it's that energy that lures you to someone or brings you to somebody. Yeah. And the situation with me and, you know, my friend, I don't want to say his name, but um, you don't have to. He, he was definitely more dominant. Right. And I was just like, God, I was like a wet puddle. I was like Alex Mack when she would turn into a puddle. Like I was just like, <laughs> could not get it yeah. together. I have more confidence now, but yeah. Well, I, I, I find that it's, you know, even when two people are connected, no matter what, when two people are doing something together, somebody at some point has to defer to somebody else. It's like, it's the reason that there's a, a co-pilot and the person who is the head pilot. At some point, somebody has to take control or make a decision. It can't always be 50-50. Even if you respect the other person, you go back and forth. The idea to me of 50-50, eventually somebody has to step up and make a decision in well, 50 -50, all aspects of life. I mean, Harry's trying to tell you that he's my bottom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I should I tell mean, by the know. pink mic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How dare he show <laughs> femininity? No, um, <laughs> kidding. Uh, I think, I think too, like, it, all, it, it also depends on what you're talking about. Like sexuality, like a sexual energy with somebody else has a lot to, at least with me sometimes has a lot to do with determining how that relationship is going to look. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I have a lot of insecurities and sex is something that I will either use or look to to validate me. And so, or at least validate my existence or if somebody likes me, it's, everything with me stems from wanting to be liked. I've talked about this with my therapist forever. And so I think, you know, that sort of sexual energy can determine, like, I just think it can determine a lot in the relationship. Sometimes, at least for me. I've, I've yeah. made a lot of mistakes. Young man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't.